Amen. Amen. Let's go into the word of God this morning. If you have your Bibles, if you could please turn with me to the book of Daniel chapter 6. Daniel chapter 6, have you, as you have heard me mention, uh, during the course of this past week, there was a Bible conference in Prescott, Arizona. Perhaps you're new joining us this morning. This is something that our church does as a fellowship every six months in January. And in July, people gather from all over the world to meet in Prescott, Arizona, where a number of men have been uh, picked to preach and bring forth the word of God. There was a number of people in our congregation that had the opportunity to watch live what God was doing, and they can all testify how God has spoken to them clearly, how God has given them vision, how God has moved in their lives supernaturally. Amen. And during the course of that week, as I mentioned, a number of sermons that are being brought, God challenges and God speaks. And I heard Pastor Greg Mitchell, the leader of our fellowship, he was preaching. He said these words, listen closely this morning. In January 2020, our fellowship had 2,700 churches. As of right now, we now have 2,800 and 71 churches. That means since January of 2020, we have planted 154 churches, and most of them were in the area, era of COVID-19. Thank you, Jesus. What does God want us to do in a confusing world? Go forward. Those are the words of Pastor Greg Mitchell, just this past conference. And as we settle on those heavy words that were spoken this conference, we are faced with the reality of our vision and of the mission that Christ left us with, is going into all the world and making disciples of the nations. How many can say amen? And in those words, the great commission that Jesus gave his disciples, he did not say, if there is opposition, it's okay to stand by. If there is hardship, you should cease to do the work. What we do know is that in the early days of the church, they were faced with in, uh, incredible amount of opposition. And we know that due to the face of opposition that there is great works that God wants to do in the world. How many can say amen? And these words that were spoken by Pastor Mitchell for you and I as Christians gives us the understanding that we must live with good habits. How many can say amen? And living with those good habits, this will now give us focus and direction and clarity in our lives that we are so desperate for. And in the message that we're going to read today in Daniel chapter 6, we're going to see Daniel was a man of God who also disciplined his life. And with those disciplines, he created good habits that in the end produced a great blessing upon his life and in the lives of others that live around him. Let's read together, beginning in verse 10. Now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went home. And in his upper room, with his windows open towards Jerusalem, he knelt down on his knees three times that day and prayed and gave thanks before his God, as was his custom since his early days. Let's jump down to verse 25. Then King Darius wrote, 
to all the people, nations, languages that dwell in all the earth. Peace be multiplied to you. I make a decree that in every dominion of my kingdom, men must tremble and fear before the God of Daniel. For he is the living God and steadfast forever. His kingdom is the one which shall not be destroyed. And his kingdom shall endure to the end. He delivers and rescues. And he works signs and wonders in heaven and on earth. Who has delivered Daniel from the power of the lions. So that this Daniel prospered in the reign of Darius, and in the reign of uh, Cyrus, the Persian. Let's pray this morning. God, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your promises this morning, and we ask this morning that you would speak into the hearts of your people. God, I take no confidence in my flesh, in my own ability. God, we need you to show up this morning. God, for your voice to speak into the hearts of your people. God, let us leave here changed Let us not leave here, O God, the same. God, that we would leave here, O God, with clarity and vision, God, that you would install into our hearts. God, we thank you for your grace, your mercy, and love. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Good habits in bad seasons. How many know that life has many transitions? Interwoven into the fabric of life are seasons of victory and success, but also you will find seasons of difficulties and hardships. Sometimes we can feel overwhelmed and even confused when we encounter difficulties. For example, Christians can experience hardships within their marriage, can leave them questioning, leave them wondering all of these things that are happening around them due to a loss of job or financial struggles. Now there is hardship within the home. Sometimes we can go through seasons of persecution, whether it be on the job or due to the hands of significant others. Could be mother or father, could be brother or sister, could be a very close friend that is near and dear to you. Betrayals, hardships. And David says these words in Psalms 55, for it is not an enemy who reproaches me. That hurts sometimes, beloved. Due to the seasons of life, you can encounter a loss of a loved one. Many people living today, they have lost loved ones due to COVID-19, due to sickness or other illnesses that they have in their body. In these stages of life, we encounter difficulty. We can worry about how things are going to work out in the future. Solomon makes the statements about the seasons of life in Ecclesiastes 3, verse 1. To everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven. Amen. And we heard these words before, beloved, but we have changed them to our liking where we say, hey, don't you know, boy, things happen for a reason. Therefore, as Christians, we know that bad seasons are a part of life. So what does God want us to do this morning when we encounter these times? What he wants us to do is what Daniel did. And that is establish good habits in the bad seasons. Amen. The story of Daniel in our text teaches us the importance of having good spiritual habits in bad seasons. As we read that text again, it tells us that Daniel, when he knew that the writing was signed, he went home and prayed. Amen. So as we dig into that story, we find that there were presidents, there were governors, there were princes and counselors and captains that consulted together. They saw what Daniel was doing and they went before the king and they told him, listen, 
This is what you must do. You must take a petition. You must sign this decree that anyone that is calling upon God, anyone that is calling upon any other name other than your name, they must be put to death. They must be cast into the lion's den. How many know this morning that's demonic? Because this is the opposition that we speak of. The opposition of people that will see how you serve God. That will see your commitment. That will see your desire to live righteous. To live holy. To live your life set apart for God. And they look at how you worship. And in their mind and in their heart, they want to come against you. Amen. But what do we find Daniel did? When he knew the writing was signed, there was something special about him, wasn't there? When he knew it was signed, he didn't go to his prayer closet. He didn't go hide himself away and say, oh, I'm going to go pray in secret. He said, I do not care what the things of this world will say. I am going to worship the Lord my God. Hallelujah. He went to his open room. He went to the upper room where people can see, where people are looking through his window and is glorifying God. Daniel's commitment to God is bold. It's bold faced. But his faith is on full display. When he knew that that paper was signed, he went home to pray. Did you know that your enemy doesn't want you to pray to God? The devil will come and he will do everything that he can to distract you. Many people know exactly what I'm talking about. You wake up in the morning, you are ready to pray, but the kids come. The phone call comes. Things happen, right? And all the distractions of hell will come against you because they know that if you are worshiping your God, that if you are praying to your God, that you are moving the hand of God, in your life, and in your situations. The disciples of Jesus also remained faithful in the, in the face of difficulties. In Acts 5, 28 and 29, saying, Did we not strictly command you to teach in this name? And look, you have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine and intended to bring this man's blood on us. But Peter... And the other apostles answered and said, we ought to obey God rather than man. Look at their boldness, beloved. We don't care what this world is going to decree. We are going to obey God. How many are going to obey God this morning with your life? I remember as a disciple, we're going on outreach and there was an area called Walmart. Walmart is packed with people shopping, doing whatever they do inside Walmart. But we use that as a tool of evangelism when we go hand out invitations and try to win souls to Jesus. But there is demonic security guards. They drive up and down every parked area and they are looking for people that are trying to sell, that are trying to witness. And many times as we go on these outreaches, we are looking for the security. When they drive by, we're hiding behind cars. We're putting flyers behind our pocket. Because we have the mindset, no, you are not going to tell us to leave. Because our command does not come by you. It comes from God. Now remember on one outreach, Sam Baki, a number of people in our church know him. Security guard came to him and said, you cannot do that here. You know what his response was? I don't take my commands from you. I take them from God. <laughs> Amen. Thank God for that boldness. Paul and Silas 
had this integrated within them. That as they are preaching, as they are doing things, now we see them in shackles. They are in prison. Not only are they in prison, but they are singing and praying in prison. Now, let me pause there. They're not singing. They're not praising because somebody came to them and said, hey, smoke this or take this pill. This will knock the edge off. We know that there's an incredible amount of stress on you. Amen. They weren't filled with that garbage. They were filled with the Holy Spirit and fire. Acts 16, 24 through 25, having received such a charge, he put them in the inner prison and fastened their feet in the stocks. But at midnight, come on, at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God and the prisoners were listening to them. They had a different spirit on them. As I mentioned, they're filled with the Holy Ghost. Doesn't matter what they encounter in life. They know that they serve a God who is worthy to be praised. Doesn't matter the good or the bad in life. This was their mentality. I'm going to serve God. I'm going to worship the Lord. Amen. And we are speaking about good habits in bad seasons. Pastor Wayman Mitchell always said, what do you do when you do not know what to do? The answer to that question is, do what you know to do. As a disciple, it has been taught to me ever since coming to the church, pray. Pray in the morning. Pray through the day. Pray in the evening. It has been taught to me to read to be faithful to church, to show up when the doors are open on time, to make yourself available. If God has a calling on your life, prepare yourself now. Read the word of God, study, allow God to use your life to impact the lives that are around you. Good habits in bad seasons. Due to COVID, that shouldn't change anything. That shouldn't change your heart as a disciple. Oh, well, I can't gather in the church. But you can gather online when we have church. When you are at home in your secret place, you can still gather an hour prior to service and call upon God. Amen. In the morning, you can still wake up and at 7 o'clock and pray and call upon God and see God move. In your needs. The lesson for every believer this morning is that no matter what you encounter in life, the good and the bad seasons in your life, you have to maintain good habits. Colin Powell says these words there are no secrets to success. It is the result of preparation, hard work, and learning from failure. I want to look secondly at developing good habits. Because we know habits can either be good or bad. Amen. We look through the word of God and it tells us constantly, teach up, train your child in the way they should go. That as they grow older, what they have been taught will not depart from them. Amen. You instill them in them at a young age to serve God, to worship God, to pray, to read the word of God. That way, as they grow older, those good habits, beloved, have been ingrained in them. A story was told to me. In one of our churches, there was a man that would go to the bank, put his card in the ATM machine in hopes that money that God will miraculously provide in his account. Every day he would go and change. There's no money in there. And there is a lesson to be learned here. And that lesson is... 
we must establish good habits. As a disciple, as I was growing, I heard from my father constantly, hey, set up a savings, set up a savings. And all of those words in my mind, I'm thinking, yeah, that's the thing to do. But soon as I got paid, come on, I'd spend it all one time. I remember getting married, finding out that my wife had set up checks that she did not even cash yet. She's working her job. Amen. She's not struggling. She's not living in poverty, but she's living below, below her means. And she had checks that were stowed away. And I'm looking at those checks thinking, man, that's Jordan's right there. Man, that's a new basketball. That's a trip. That's a vacation. All of this stuff is, I'm looking at it. I didn't have those good habits established within my heart, within my life. When seasons of difficulty and hardships come, when you could have saved, you could have had money to fall back on to help you through that season. Come on. Old habits. What are the habits that you are creating in your life this morning? What are the habits that you are falling back on? Especially when you encounter hardship. You encounter hardship and it's tough, it's hard. And in your mind and in your heart, you're saying you want to give up. You want to quit. You want to go back to the old lifestyle. Think about what you are thinking and saying. You're going to give up your relationship with God to go back to smoking weed. To go back to drinking and fornicating. To hooking up with that old relationship. You don't know if they've picked up some disease along the way. This is your mind and in your heart, beloved. Why? Because in the hardship, you aren't able to process correctly. You take on more stress, more heartache by going to sin, by going out into the world. Listen to me this morning. I have never met a happy backslider. There was one man that I ran into. He had served God, but he backslid. And I said, hey, man, how you doing? And his response right away with pride in his voice, better than ever. And I'm thinking, really? Better than ever? You've traded eternity with God. You've traded that right relationship. You've traded salvation and you've given it to the things of this world. But in the end, that road that you are currently on is headed towards destruction and you are better than ever. These difficulties that we can encounter, we can experience fear. In the season that we are faced with now, many Christians living in fear. Many people, not even Christians, living in fear. Worried about virus. Worried about getting robbed. Worried about getting molested, taken advantage of. Come on. Living in fear. This morning, fear is crippling. Fear is blinding. It will rob you of what God is trying to bless. It will rob you of what God is trying to do in your life. Isn't that interesting that the demonic will try to stop us from being on the right track by speaking fear? Fear multiplies from those who believe the lie. How many know this morning there is power in our words? 
There is power in your words, beloved. And for many people, they don't think about this aspect. For them, it's, it's natural. It's a bad habit that has already been cultivated within their life. And they don't know that those words that they speak are seeds that are being sown into their life and into the lives around them. That's why when I speak to people, I tell them, listen, there is power. There are certain things you should not say. There are certain things that are said to you that you should not accept. For example, that God would bring healing upon your life and restoration upon your soul when you repent and turn from your sins. But there will be people around you that will say, hey, you're not going to be healed. You're going to die. You know what you should say? Being a believer, I bind you in the name of Jesus. I'm not going to accept those words that you curse over my life because God has promised me blessing. If someone tells you a bad report, don't receive it. We must pick up and develop Good habits this morning. First Thessalonians 5, 21 through 22. But examine everything carefully. Hold fast to that which is good and abstain from everything that is evil. I want to look at developing good habits. When the pressure was upon Daniel. Right. When the pressure was On him, what did he do? He prayed. He gave thanks before his God as he was accustomed to since early days. We get a sense that Daniel prayed and gave thanks without making any changes. He did what he knew to do. He knew no matter what, I serve a supernatural God. That is going to get me through this hardship. Amen. As a young boy, Samuel was taught how to hear from God. First Samuel 3, 9. Therefore, Eli said to Samuel, go lie down and it shall be if he calls you that you must say, speak, Lord, for your servant hears. What a wonderful good habit. Eli knew exactly what was happening because here's Samuel. Hey, did you call me? No. Go lay down. Goes, lays down. He comes back. Hey, did you call me? No. But then Eli knew, hold on. Somebody is trying to get a hold of you. That's when he responds, gives him these words. Amen. Galatians 6, 9 says these words, and let us not grow weary while doing good for in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. And I stick to this scripture this morning, beloved, because it's many times when we are doing good, doing good, doing good, but still bad is happening to us that we get frustrated and say, oh, Lord, what's the point? It's useless. We get frustrated. We want to give in. We want to forget it all and go back and do the things of the world. But take hope, take encouragement in this scripture this morning that God would speak to you and I and say, don't grow weary in the seasons when things go wrong, when you are doing good, because for in due season we shall reap. If we do not lose heart. I speak to people and I say to them, listen, it's in that moment when you throw in the towel. When you say, you know what, I'm done. I'm tired of this. That God is ready to pour out supernatural blessing. If you're wanting to learn good habits, there must be a willingness to learn or to be teachable. In my early days of trying to learn to play basketball, my dad 
would invest in me, how to play the game. And I remember getting frustrated, getting upset, and just leaving the basketball and going inside the house. I was young, but then I grew older, 17, 18 years old, and I realized, man, I don't know everything. I went to my dad and I said, Dad, can you teach me how to play properly? He started investing into my life. But I came of an age where I said, you know what? Let me call on someone who knows. There are many times in our life where we say, no, I'm going to live my life. I'm going to do what I want to do. We're not teachable. We're not willing to learn. But there's going to come a day, beloved, where we're tired of the hardships. We're tired of failing and failing and failing. Where we say, God, forgive me. God, teach me. Listen to the words of Paul in 1 Corinthians 11.1. 1. Imitate me just as I also imitate Christ. He's instilling into his disciples, into all of those followers. Listen, you're not just doing what I want to do. Paul's mind and his heart was saying, listen, I am seeking Christ. I am seeking the one who is higher. So as you are following me, I am following Christ. Amen. Good habits keep us in God's word. It keeps us in prayer and along God's people. Even as we ride the emotional ups and downs of life, it keeps us stable. And that is what those good habits will do in your life. Those good habits in the bad seasons, if you establish them now, you will find stability. As I close this, eve uh, this morning, I want to speak about the benefits of maintaining good habits. And first and foremost, I want to address Daniel's decision to live righteously. He knew that decree was signed. He went and prayed. And we also know, continuing that story, that they took him and cast him into the lion's den. Our faith is going to be tested, saints. We are going to be thrown into the lion's den. For some of you, that lion's den will be at home in your workplace, at church. You are thrown into the lion's den. But I want you to know this, that when you make a decision to follow God, to follow those good habits, right will always be made right. Amen. His heart was in full service to God. And we find that through his good habits that Daniel was delivered. That God sent an angel and those angels shut the lion's mouths. Picture that. They throw him in in the evening. They're expecting him to be gone in the morning. They go, they open and they find Daniel untouched, not a scratch, not a bite, not bleeding. Nothing is wrong with him. He's sitting there in a lion's den. Come on. And that is the God that we serve, beloved. Daniel learned what every Christian needs to learn. God will either get you out of the trial or he will give you grace in your trial. Many times we pray, oh God, spare me. Oh God, do not get me. Don't allow me to go through this. But it's going through it that God wants you to understand he is with you. Daniel, or, uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego thrown into the fiery furnace. 
I'm thinking they're praying, God, deliver me. I don't want to go in there. God, spare me. Make a way. Give me favor. But it was in that hardship. Their faith was tested. But we also find in Scripture that God himself was with them. They were thrown in their bound. But we also find the image of them no longer in shackles, no longer tangled up. But they're praising God. (laughs) The king is saying, hey, didn't we throw three men in there? Why is there four? And why is the fourth looking like that? It's got the appearance of the Son of God. What's going on here? That's supernatural, beloved. The Lord is willing to give you grace in your trial. I want to close with this story very quickly. Michael Phelps. He is well known. He is an Olympic swimmer. Various amounts of gold medals and achievements. It was told of him at a young age that a coach saw his potential and said, let me teach him. At a very young age, he had him imagine winning. Imagine himself swimming counting his strokes, eating a certain way, stretching a certain way, doing everything in a repetitive cycle. That way that if he encountered any hardship or anything out of the ordinary, he would always turn to what he has been taught to do. Michael Phelps, as he grew older, his coach threw him into a pool and told him to uh, swim in the pitch dark. He taught him at a young age to count his strokes, to constantly think and imagine himself winning, touching the wall and pushing off and going the other direction. He did not know that one day all of those teachings and instructions that his coach was teaching him would pay off in the end. In one of his matches, he jumps into the water at the sound, and automatically his goggles began to fill with water. He didn't panic. He kept swinging, uh, swimming, counting his strokes. And before he knew, his goggles were completely filled. He couldn't see the bottom of the pool. He couldn't see the T at the end of the pool to push off and go the other direction. But what he knew to do was ingrained in him, count his strokes and press forward. He touches the wall, pushes off, goes the other direction. And at that, he is still counting his strokes and he hears the crowd cheering. And increasingly and increasingly, people are getting louder. And now in his heart and in his mind, he's not sure if they're cheering for him or cheering for somebody else. And this pushed him to dig deeper, swam faster. His strokes increased, counting his strokes 20 Finally, 21 strokes, he knew that he needed to stretch to the wall to reach his end. He timed it perfectly, took off his goggles, looked at the board, and saw WR, which means world record, next to his name. He had won another gold. All due to those good habits that he established early on in his life. Let that be an example for you and I, that we would cultivate these good habits, that in the moments things are cloudy, things are frustrating, things are uncertain, 
that we would resort to what we know to do, and that is to seek the Lord our God. Let's bow our heads this morning. Let's close our eyes. I want to thank all of those for joining us this morning, and perhaps you're joining, you're not saved, you're not a Christian, you haven't given your heart to God. But this morning, you want to repent of your sin because you know you haven't been calling upon Christ. You haven't exactly been living how he wants you to live. And you know this morning that if you died, you wouldn't make heaven your home. Isn't that frightening? For me, I knew. And because I knew, I knew ultimately that I had to get my heart right, that I could not continue living the way that I was. And what the Bible tells you and I to do is to repent. That word repent means to turn. You go the opposite direction. You are doing a 180 with your life. No longer you're going down that sinful path leading toward destruction. You're turning. And you're following Christ in righteousness. And I'm wondering how many are joining us this morning. You want to give your life to Jesus. I want to pray with you because I truly believe God is moving upon your heart. He's moving so heavily upon your heart. You want to respond this morning. Maybe you're backslidden. You once had a relationship with God. You need to come clean. You know that you're living in sin. You want to come to God. Whoever it may be this morning, all I want you to do is pray this prayer after me. Lift your hands towards heaven and say, Dear Lord, I know that I'm a sinner. And I know that I've done wrong in my life. And this morning, I leave my sin in your hands. And I ask for your forgiveness. And I pray that you would change me and make me a new creation. I submit my life to you. And I thank you for the work of the cross that I can be redeemed by the blood of Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Then, saints of God, I want to speak to you for just a moment. Good habits and bad seasons. Disciple, are you at the moment establishing in your heart and in your life good habits? Through the difficulties, through all the challenges and obstacles that you are currently facing, are you living by those good habits? Or have you resorted back to those old tendencies, old relationships, old things that you used to do? It's not found back there. The answer to life's problems are always found in God. And perhaps this is you this morning. I understand it's heavy. I understand it's burdensome. But we need to come to God. And I believe there are people in our congregation that you need to come to God this morning. Give it to God. Ask for his grace. Ask for his protection. Ask for clarity in whatever you are faced with at the moment. Amen. Let's find a place to pray this morning, and then we'll close in a word of prayer together.
Amen, saints. Amen. God is good. And uh, this evening, we're going to have another service that begins at 6. And we invite you to come again, also to be inviting those that are around you. Maybe you've got some friends, uh, family members. You can send them the link to uh, our online service. Amen. Let's believe God. Let's contend for fruit that would remain in our congregation. Let's continue to encourage one another. Amen. Let's close in a word of prayer this morning. God, we thank you for your word that you have spoken into our lives. We pray, God, that we would continually honor those convictions that you place within our lives. God, we pray that even now that we would live by those good habits. God, that we would God, uh, uh, cultivate those good habits now when we are experiencing hardships. God, I pray, help us to lead by godly examples to influence those that are around us, God, to follow you. We give you praise. We give you glory this morning in Jesus name. Amen. God bless you, saints.